Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you a time lapse that was taken from a six part mini course where we create a, an acrylic painting of a jungle path on gessoed panel. Now this complete lesson series includes ebooks and uh, narrated instruction and there's a lot of things that we cover in this series. If you want to learn more about how you can access this series all you have to do is click on the link in the upper corner of the video right now or you can click on the link in the description below and learn more about our membership program which includes all of our courses our weekly live lessons ebooks lesson plans for teachers and more with that being said i hope you enjoy the following time lapse So we'll begin things here with a loose sketch just using an HB Graphite pencil on gessoed panel. This is a smooth panel surface which is going to allow us to apply glazes later on in the process. But before we get to that we'll create a quick underpainting here. And this is a looser underpainting just applied with burnt umber. I'm using a little bit of water here just to thin out the paint to create some of the mid-tones and some of the lighter values. And then going back with an additional application to make uh, some of the values a little bit darker to establish the shadows. Once we've got our underpainting in place, we're going to start with the background, then we'll work our way to the middle ground, and then lastly the foreground. So we're going to start here, as you can see, with loose brush strokes, progressively getting slightly darker and pushing the contrast and range of value as we work. We don't need to concern ourselves with many of the details at this point. We'll slowly and gradually refine the details, and I think this is a mistake a lot of beginners make when they're painting with an opaque medium like acrylics is they just try to jump right into those details and really when we're working with an opaque medium like this we can work loosely establish the shape establish some of the base colors and then gradually build up the uh, relationships of the values while we continue to develop the texture and, and continue to add colors and so on and you can see here we're also addressing the trees here, just adding a little bit of texture here and of course a little bit of that relationship of dark and light to create the illusion of the light source. But throughout the painting we end up returning back to these trees as we start to establish a more defined color scheme and also start to add a few glazes which we'll see in a moment. So you can see we're progressively and slowly working our way closer to the foreground and as we do so the details just start to emerge. We're not really trying to force the details details out here. We're just adding dark and light values and those relationships between the darks and the lights are going to eventually lead to the illusion of form within the scene. You'll also notice that we're doing a little bit of negative painting here and what that means is we're just adding colors in between some of the shapes that we've already established. And This is especially helpful for defining some of the shapes of the objects, especially the leaves. And you'll notice as we work closer to the viewer, we're going to start to see a little bit more contrast, especially contrast in value. So we're going to start to see some of those darker values pop show up and, and we're going to see that stronger contrast between the lights and the darks. And we can see this in the upper right hand corner where we have light filtering in and then it quickly moves to a darker shade where we've got a lot more shadow happening there. For the most part we work with a larger brush and then gradually work our way to a smaller brush as those details start to need to be addressed. So as we have established some of the colors and some of the shapes of those colors, then we can start refining some of the details and you'll see throughout the process here we keep returning back to those bushes and, and smaller trees and things and refine those details. Now of course we've moved on to the tree trunk that has fallen across the path and there's a variety of different colors here and we built up depth in the color by layering multiple applications. There's lots of oranges here as well. Now in this particular painting we decided to pull out a secondary color scheme of purple, green, and orange. So you're going to see a lot of those purples show up and of course there's plenty of greens in the scene already but we're also going to pull out some oranges too especially as we work down towards the foreground. Now you can see here as we begin to address some of the smaller trees, we're adding a bit of highlight and shadow to give a little bit of an illusion of texture, but also the illusion of volume and form. And then right over the top, we're layering some of those shapes of leaves. And of course, these are a little bit more detailed. They're a little closer to the viewer, and of course, they overlap the objects behind them. And each one of these leaves, of course, has a lighter portion and also a darker version or a darker portion as well to create the illusion of light. 
we'll move our way down into the middle ground and of course we're just progressively working our way from the top of the pitcher plane down to the bottom now there are a few rocks within the scene of course and here with our first one you can see we just established some larger areas of dark and light and then went in with a smaller brush to develop the texture again just adding light dark values we'll address the prominent tree here in nearly the middle of the picture plane again just by creating an illusion of form by developing the dark and light values and you can see here we're bringing out a bit of warmth with a couple of applications of some glazes a little bit of Indian yellow mixed with alizarin crimson just to bring out a little bit more warmth and then we'll just continue on working down the picture plane you can kind of see a theme here with the order that we're approaching this but by working from the background to the middle ground to the foreground that allows us to complete areas um, fully before moving on to the next section and of course that prevents us from having to go back and paint around sections uh, sometimes we want to do that when we do a little bit of negative painting but most of the time we want to be layering applications over the top of areas that we've already applied paint and allow those areas that we're applying over the top to be the finished portion of the painting. So that's that's why we work from the background to the middle ground to the foreground when we're working with an opaque medium like acrylics. You can see we're also using some glazes here uh, to establish a little bit of an undertone or a little bit of an undercolor, I should say. This is an alizarin crimson glaze and then over the top we're bringing out some purples and some oranges. As I mentioned before in this particular lesson series, uh, I decided to pull out a secondary color scheme of orange, green, and purple. So in, in every opportunity, for every opportunity that we have in this painting, to pull out a little bit more purple, pull out a little bit more orange, and pull out a little bit more green, although we didn't really have to work hard to pull out green. There's plenty of green here. Uh, we're doing that. So that's why you're seeing a lot of purple and a lot of orange in this image. You will also notice here that there are, there are a lot of layers of color that we put here on the path. Lots of glazes, lots of semi-transparent applications of color to build up that complexity in the color. We're not quite finished with the path at this point either, so we'll revisit it in a moment. A few more leaves are added, of course, over the top of the path. And as we work down, any area or any object that overlaps an area that we've already completed, we'll go ahead and address that as we move down. But even still, there are areas in the painting, whatever painting you create, you'll notice you'll have to go back and do some alterations. And here, we're increasing the contrast and also adding a few more details here on some of the smaller leaves and smaller trees closer to the top of the picture plane. Of course, we'll also uh, revisit some of the smaller trees and bushes and adjust the contrast here just to make the light feel a little bit more natural. Then it's on to our third rock. And again, the process is the same. We start by just developing the larger, darker, and lighter shapes and then progressively switch to a smaller brush to develop some of those details. And in, for this particular rock, we've added a glaze of Indian yellow. We've also added that glaze to the other rocks, although that is not captured here in the time lapse. We've added a bit of moss here, and this is just a mixture of sap green and cadmium yellow. And for the darker areas, we've added a little bit of Prussian blue and also some paints gray. The rocks continue a little bit of a smaller set of rocks a little bit further down the path, but the approach is still the same. We just basically create the shape of the rock with a solid color and then adjust the values to develop the form and the texture. A few more oranges and purples, of course, are added to the path to bring out more of that color. Now, of course, as we work down to the extreme foreground, we're seeing a lot more shadow on this path down here. So we're going to use a lot more purple down here just to create a cooler undertone. And of course, we're going to layer some of those oranges over the top to create some little leaves and smaller rocks and things on the path. Then it's back to our fourth rock, again, developing the relationship of the values to create the illusion of texture and, of course, to create the illusion of form as well. You can see here we're using mostly neutrals. There's a little bit of purple here in the mixture, but it's mostly Payne's gray and titanium white, and we're just establishing that relationship between the different values. Then we can go over the top of it with a series of glazes to bring out some of the color. So in the highlighted areas on the top portion of the rock, we're going to add a bit of Indian yellow. And you can see how the values that we've established underneath just show through. So the glazes just basically affect the color. In the areas of shadow, we're going to add alizarin crimson. And of course, the glazes bring out a bit of color, but they also help to harmonize the elements within the scene. So if we if we add these glazes throughout the painting, then the painting's gonna be harmonized. 
Of course, we can go back and strengthen up the shadows and the highlights right over the top and add additional details if we prefer. Here, a little bit of uh, moss is added to this rock again, starting with a darker yellow green and then lighter yellow greens applied over the top. A bit more alizarin crimson added in the shadow, and then it's time to turn our attention to one of the stranger rocks within the scene. This rock had a very strange shape, but it's an interesting rock, and it also helps to move our eyes down the path as well since it almost creates an arrow shape but here again we start with a basic color first and then establish the values and then over the top a series of glazes again indian yellow and a lozarin crimson then we'll just continue working our way down and now we're definitely in the extreme foreground here adding a few subtle indications of that uh, smaller rock or medium sized rock and a couple of smaller rocks underneath. We'll also add some indications of a few pieces of bark, a few twigs and a few rocks again using primarily oranges and purples. Again it may seem strange to use orange and purple here but of course we're uh, pulling out a secondary color scheme which will all make sense in the end. We'll go ahead and darken up some of the shadowed areas and pull a few specks of purple and orange on the right side of the picture plane, even though this portion of the forest is heavily covered in shadow. Now we'll address those roots, that complex root system, which is really an important element within this scene. We start with a very dark yellow green, establishing some of the shadowed areas. And then over the top, we'll use a medium yellow green and then an even lighter yellow green. So this is a progression of applications that slowly get lighter. And you can see here we're using small strokes with a small round brush, of course, to create the illusion of texture. But at the same time, we're also creating the illusion of the form of uh, this, this root structure as well. Then to warm things up, we'll apply a glaze of Indian yellow over the top, and of course that helps to harmonize things as well. We'll add a bit of glaze on our tree trunk, very quickly seen there, uh, again with Indian yellow, and then it's back to the bottom of the picture plane, adding a few more indications of oranges and purples to create these little leaves and things. A couple of green leaves are also included down there as well. On the right side of the picture plane, we'll darken up some of the strongest shadows, and that helps to define these forms and shapes a, a little bit more. Uh, it's just slightly darker, these shadows that we added, but of course they make a difference. A few longer sticks and twigs and things, and then our final rock on the lower left portion is addressed, again, by establishing the values, and then a couple of glazes. And there's a large rock, but it's covered with moss. And of course, we address that the same way that we did the mossy covered uh, root system in the middle. And then it's time for our final glaze to pull everything together. Again, this is Indian yellow, bringing additional warmth and light within the scene. We'll strengthen up the highlights and increase the contrast with a little bit more shadow here and there. And with those last finishing touches, our painting, our challenging painting of a jungle path with acrylics is complete. Drawing and painting are skills that anyone can learn and develop. But learning a skill like drawing or painting requires a bit of knowledge, and that's what we provide you with at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting on a variety of subjects, live lessons, which we broadcast each week, which were recorded and stored in our vault of recorded live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, lesson plans for teachers, and much, much more. To learn more about our comprehensive program and start learning today, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.